welcome to another Exposing the Truth video. Now, this is ruffling a couple of feathers, but this is stuff that you guys need to know. And I spend a lot of money and a lot of time on researching and um, informing you of the stuff that you really need to know about the process because you can leverage this information to get your results by having this knowledge and acting with it, right? So we are looking at, once again, how the credit bureaus make dealing with the creditors or the furnisher difficult. So a couple of things that you need to really understand is that the bureaus own the entire system, the whole system. And what I'm talking about, we're gonna go one by one, is that, okay, what industry, what is the business of the bureaus? Obviously it's a financial industry, but what is their business? They are in the data business, right? So they maintain these huge databases with my information, your information, your mom's information, you know, if you have adult children, their information, if they have credit, all that kind of stuff. It's in these massive databases where they obtain, maintain, and sell information, right? So they own those databases. They own the entire system. And not only that, but they own the matching algorithms that come up with your credit report. Okay, so a credit report, and a lot of people get this misconstrued, your credit report is a query that is run on this database. Kind of like when you go to Google and you put in how to make stuffed peppers. It's going to run a query on a massive database of websites and blog posts and videos, so on and so forth, and it's going to give you uh, partial and full matches. And it will even tell you if it's a partial match. It'll say missing whatever your keywords were, right? Um, but it's a partial match, so it came up in your results. Your credit report is no different, okay? So the reason that you also have partial information on there is because of these um, matching algorithms that they write because you have to remember that more data is more profitable for them. So you might find that um, there's a secondary date of birth or a secondary last four of the social or you know Bob Smith three streets over is also on your credit report because you're Bob Smith the second and he's Bob Smith Jr. Whatever it is, there might be other information on there that does not belong to you and that's because of these algorithms and these formulas that the bureaus write themselves, okay? So not only that, but they own the Metro 2 format. The Metro 2 is what tells the, uh, the creditors how to report the data. And lastly, they own and control the training materials and docs that for all this stuff, right? The system, the database, the matching algorithm and the Metro 2 format. So, I mean, if that wasn't enough, like I said, the Metro 2 tells the creditors how to report your information, right? Your accounts and your data and all that kind of stuff. And in the Metro 2, this is very important. Whatever you're doing, please stop, put it down, grab a pen and the paper. This is very, very important. The Metro 2, and this is quoting from, excuse me, from the Metro 2, and I quote, only inaccurately reported consumers should be deleted, end quote. Only inaccurately reported consumers should be deleted. Directly from the Metro 2 that the bureaus own and control. Think about that. Just think about that. Think about what that means. Now, if we go and look at the FCRA, the FCRA, in fact, says delete if it's inaccurate, incomplete, and unverifiable. However, Metro 2 says delete if inaccurate. Now, let me ask you a question. Where did incomplete and unverifiable go? Where did incomplete and unverifiable go? Why is it only inaccurate? How does the law say three things and yet the bureaus wrote only one. See, this is what I'm talking about. If you don't know it, there's nothing that you can do about it. But when you know it, you can do something with this information. 
It's going to change the way that you write your letters. It's going to change the way that you write your dispute reasons. And it's going to change what you understand and know about the process and investigations. Okay, so basically it says that if it's inaccurate, it can be deleted. If it's fraudulent, it can be deleted, but it doesn't matter if it's incomplete because remember we have partial matches on your information, right? And it doesn't matter if it's unverifiable because unverifiable and inaccurate are two totally different things. Unverifiable and inaccurate are two totally different things. Okay? So, the conclusion to this whole thing, and I already said it, is that more data means more money. And taking it a step even further, more subprime data means even more money. So let's just go over this one more time. The bureaus own the system, and the system means the databases, the matching algorithms, right? The training materials and the Metro 2 format. The Metro 2 format states that only inaccurately reported consumers should be deleted. Yet the FCRA states that it's inaccurate, incomplete, and unverifiable. So what the bureaus did was said, well, we don't care what the law says. We don't care what the law says. We are only going to remove inaccurate information. So for those consumers out there that think that just because a law says something, that that automatically means that something needs to be deleted, that's completely incorrect because you don't understand the system. You don't understand the system. So to get your results, you have to use this to your advantage by writing your letters and writing your reasons very, very carefully. Because you have to remember that the longer you dispute, the harder it is to remove your negative items, right? So people come to me after disputing with company after company and you know, five years, uh, you know, of disputing, you know, I didn't remove this, I didn't remove that. You, what, 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 what do you really think is going to happen now? Like, that wasn't my point behind saying that, but like, you have to understand how this whole system works and it is a system just like the justice system just like you know the child the child support and all that kind of there's systems for everything right this is no different this is no different this is no different this system was designed for you to fail this system was not designed for you to succeed so you have to use everything that you know the facts everything that you know to your advantage. So you have to be very, very careful in the things that you say and how you dispute, okay? And you guys know that I'm totally against templates. I'm so anti-template. I'm so anti-template, all right? You have to remember that when you're disputing, you need to use the facts directly off your credit report. And you need to tell them why those facts are inaccurate why those facts are inaccurate. And even with stuff that you don't know, don't, don't use the word unverified. Don't use the word unverified. Don't use the word unverified. Even with something that you don't recognize, you need to show them why it's reported inaccurately. Because remember, only inaccurately reported consumers should be deleted. So what are you going to do now with this information? Tell me in the comments, what or how are you going to change the way that you dispute either on your own credit report or on your clients that's going to result in a better outcome than if you hadn't known this? You guys have to realize that I put a ton of time and money into researching and coming up with this stuff that's going to help you. I don't just wake up one day and say, oh, well, you know, let me let me just throw some stuff on a, my whiteboard in, you know, my home office and then, you know, I'm going to create a video. No, I, I plan and I research and um, I spend hours away from my children and my husband to come up with this stuff because I know that it's going to help me. It's
it's going to help my clients, it's going to help you guys, but you have to use it, you have to use it. You have to use this information. That's why I create these videos. That's why we're exposing the truth. Because it's not just for me, it's for you. All this stuff is in here for you to know and for you to find, all right? So I guess that's the end of this video. Um, I have one more that I'm going to record for you guys tonight. I just got finished with um, the previous one. But um, with my normal closing, if you know someone that needs help, share this video with them. Very, very simple, right? If you personally need help, please don't comment asking how to contact me. It's in the description of every single video. It's in the description of every single video, including this one. Open up the description, go and go to that link that'll take you to my booking page where um, after you watch my uh, video that explains my program and you can see you know how it works then we can jump on a call to see um, if it'll work and if I can help you I will offer my services uh, normally there's much more of a process that goes into it but because of the current situation I am helping who whom I can um, speaking of which if you are a mom if you are a mom and you want to know and you want to find out how to make a lucrative income online I will also post my Facebook as well as my new YouTube down in the description all right so that is it from me to you you need my help use the link in the description or any of the other links that will take you to my website um, my other social media and for those of you that are just my regular YouTube family I just want to say thank you um, I'm thanking you because I have been on YouTube now for uh, what is it three years January January 2017 or November 2016 I can't remember which one it was but that's when I started YouTube um, it was just posting some videos for me I didn't think it was gonna go anywhere and you know now I'm at over a million views and almost to 17,000 subscribers um, so I really appreciate you guys you guys are the reason that I'm obviously making these videos so thank you um, make sure to subscribe if you have not done so because this is just the beginning of it. We're just hitting the tip of the iceberg, guys. We need to get deep. We need to find. Um, we need to find out why the Titanic didn't, you know, move when they were supposed to, because then all those people wouldn't have died. All right, terrible and um, terrible, uh, you know, analogy, but it was just off the top of my head. This is real life. I'm not an actor. I don't have a script. I just have notes. So that is it. I'm done rambling. Um, I am going to stop my video now and go make another one for you guys. Bye.